If you're a fan of your new house, you know that I enjoy building energy efficient homes. Well, today I'm on top of one of the most energy efficient homes in the country. We're gonna take a look at the advantages of building homes underground. From the roadway, this home simply looks like a grass covered hill with a few odd looking concrete structures scattered about. But inside, it's an architectural marvel designed for the utmost in energy efficiency and luxury living. Homeowner Bill Coleman says you'll find no insulation behind the interior walls of this home. There's no need. Most of the walls and roof are buried under an earthen berm that's at least four feet thick, giving those areas of the home an energy efficiency rating of R100. The only exposed wall is in the front of the house, and it contains mostly double pane energy efficient windows. The only exposed portion of the roof looks like a submarine coming to surface, surrounded with glass blocks to allow in light. So Bill, this is the only exposed section of the roof. This is where your light's getting in? Right, it comes down the center of the house and then also from windows on the, the front side of the house. Okay, and it goes in that glass block, then there's just a shaft running down through there? Uh, it's, and the sh walls of the shaft are painted white so that the light reflects and, and spreads throughout the center. Okay, well I know it's a big home, so we've gotta be standing on the rest of the roof right now. And how deep is the soil here? The dirt itself is a, more than four feet deep and then we've got polyurethane insulation bats underneath that. How do you keep it all draining? Because I know you don't want any water leaks there. I mean, how, how do you get the water out of here? There's a very slight slope to the south that directs all the water off the roof. Okay, and then the material, I see there's right, right here, we've got a little bit of uh, old asphalt, it looks like. Is that down on the roof also? Yes, uh, all the fill dirt for the covering the, the building was provided free by the city of Dallas. That's, that's all right. Uh, how heavy is this now? I mean, you've got a lot of soil, a lot of fill on top of your roof. How I'm, much weight? I, I come up with a figure of around 800 tons overhead. 800 tons. Uh, do you ever worry about earthquakes? No, not <laughs> earthquakes or tornadoes for that matter. But uh, when it creaks, uh, we listen very closely. It makes you a little nervous? Just a little. And then right over here, what's at this edge? Uh, we've got a porch that runs the length of the front side of the building on this side of the house. Well, we're 20 feet deeper now underneath the ground, but there's a lot of light. Bill, what do you call this area here? It's a clerestory window, and that allows the light to come in from the east and west and bounce off the walls of the shaft above us, thus filling in the center of the house. And it's just those glass blocks that we just saw that's letting that in. Right. Yeah, works good. Notice over here, you've got quite a beam and it looks like it's holding up the whole ceiling structure. I don't, I don't see any walls supporting it at all. Well, the, the beam that runs the length of the house is, uh, provides an edge for the planks above us to rest on. And each one of these planks weighs about 4,000 pounds plus what you've got in the dirt above that. So these planks are concrete? Yes, they're pre-stressed concrete, all laid in place in a matter of a few hours. Okay and you're holding up a lot of dirt. Like you said, how, how many pounds? Uh, 800 tons is what I estimated based upon the weight of the roof and the dirt on top of it. Well, I'm like you, I'd be a little nervous if I heard it creak. I may, I may actually leave if I hear that. And then just this one side has windows, sort of like a walkout basement. Yes, we've got windows and doors on this wall, uh, which is the west facing wall. And this allows us to meet all the building codes for requirements about emergency egress. Okay, so for egress, in case there's a fire in here, you have to have a way out, so all the bedrooms are built against the wall with windows? Yes, and they also have a view that way out the back side of the house. That's nice. And then the rest of the house, the other three sides, no windows? Correct. It's all uh, concrete walls with uh, no openings and dirt on the outside. So low utility bills? Very, very low. Uh, we've spent over $250 for a house half its size before we moved into this one. Each month on utilities? Yes. How about this one? Less than $200 a month for 4,200 square feet. Twice as big as the other one? Yes. Tell me about this. This looks like a New Mexico fireplace if I've ever seen one. Uh, it was designed and built by a, a very nice lady from Taos, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. She builds fireplaces like this all around the world. And opening there and opening on this side as well? Right, so it warms both sides of the room and the rear of the fireplace is like a parabolic mirror. It's set up in such a way that it reflects the heat outward from the, uh, the fire logs as they're burning and thus warms a much larger area of the home. Because there are no load bearing walls, a future owner could completely tear out the home's existing walls and redesign the interior floor plan. 
Also, there's no attic to run the air conditioning and electrical lines. Well, Bill, it looks like you have to figure out some creative places to put stuff that would normally go in the attic or underneath the slab. Right. Uh, we've got the air conditioning ducts and all of the water, both cold and hot, traveling through a chase to the bathrooms and to the kitchen. Going throughout the whole house. Where do you end up putting your blower unit for your air conditioner? It's in the tunnel here, which connects the house itself to the garage, which is behind us. Okay, the tunnel, huh? Then it's above us also then, huh? Right. We're making efficient use of all the space here. Okay, and there's the unit up there. The blower for the heater and the air conditioner is mounted up above there. And then how about water heaters? We've got a water heater out in the garage, and through that insulated pipe we just saw in the chase, it delivers the hot water throughout the house. We've got a continuous running electrical pump so that we expand the capacity of the hot water heater by the pipeline delivering to all the faucets. Living underground certainly has its advantages when it comes to energy efficiency. Plus, Bill saves $1,000 a year on insurance because the home qualifies as a semi-fire resistant structure. But keep in mind this was a long and somewhat costly construction process. It took 18 months to build this home at a cost of more than $200 per square foot. If you'd like more information on innovative building techniques that can save you money on your energy bills and your insurance, contact us on the internet at michaelholligan.com. Mm -hmm.